Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing today? Well, this keeps on popping up. And this is back in May, and I kept on hearing about it, and I didn't think anything of it because, honestly, I've heard the same story before, and I thought it was the same story. But apparently not. A crocodile was spotted again in Melbourne Beach, the third time in six months. I will say this before I say anything else. Crocodiles can swim. And if they can swim, they can get from one place to another. <clears throat> and Melbourne Beach is not far-reaching compared to the rest of their habitat. I mean, shoot, we get them up in clear waters and in St. Pete sometimes. A nine-foot crocodile swimming uh, in Melbourne Beach traveled here from Key Largo. I mean, it's a pretty decent-sized crocodile. And I think the thing that freaks people out the most about this is that they can spend a lot of time in salt water and travel a decent amount of time in salt water, which alligators do not like to do. Uh, it's pretty common to see alligators in Florida, but crocodiles, not so much. However, an American crocodile was spotted recently in Melbourne Beach, according to the town's police department. And it's at least the third time uh, a crocodile has been seen in that area in less than six months. On May 9th, Melbourne Beach police posted photos of a crocodile and warned people not to feed the reptile. According to its Facebook page, uh, FWC is aware of this crocs hanging around 6th Avenue River Access and the Key Streets. They estimate his age to be about 10 years old. The crocodile has, uh, was, has been tagged with a telemetry unit to track him. There are less than 12 statewide that are wearing this unit. They picked him because he was one of the northernmost American crocodiles, and they want to follow him as he goes in the winter, or where he goes in the winter. He's federally protected, so please do not mess with him or feed him. It is a felony. Isn't it, like, aren't you going to get in trouble for feeding or messing with an alligator as well? Like, um, the American crocodile is one of the largest crocodile species. Males can reach lengths of 20 feet, weighing up to a ton. Like any other large crocodilian, they can be dangerous to humans, especially if we feed them. Uh, but tend not to, um, as an aggressive or wait, they tend not to be as aggressive as Asian and African crocodiles. Here's a roundup of crocodile sightings in Brevard. Um, yeah, I mean, again, Melbourne Beach, April 16th, 2023, of crocodile swimming in his backyard in Melbourne Beach. His captain says, the American crocodile, yes, in our backyard. He is nine feet long. He was born in Key Largo and is 16 years old. I thought they just said he was 10. When he was a juvenile, he was hit twice by cars back to back and spent some time in rehab before being released. Since being released, he has traveled from Key Largo over the years and ended up in our beachside around December this last year. FWC said he got a pretty beat up when trying to live in the ocean and ended up being captured. Had a transmitter added and released in Archie car and from hadn't added and released in Archie car. What, okay, whatever that means. Crocodile sending itself on the sand in Melbourne Beach. On December uh, 4th, 2022, Pedro Telez, land management technician with Brevard's Environmental Endangered Lands Program, saw an eight-foot crocodile hanging on the dunes near the county's Barrier Island Sanctuary in Melbourne Beach. Um, waves crash over a crocodile on the shore of the shallow water of Sebastian Inlet. I'll tell you what, Sebastian is rough. I almost drowned out in Sebastian once. I was shark fishing, and I was rowing out of bait. And dropped the bait off. And I mean, there was like four or five foot swells. And I was able to get through them on the way out. But on the way in, I was surfing in. And I had a life jacket on. And I got knocked off while I was surfing in. And um, I just kept on getting sucked into the swell. And I was trying to hold on to my kayak and get back onto it. But the, they, the waves were coming too quick. And I just kept on getting beat over. Um, and the kayak kept on like hitting me in the back of the head and landing on me. And I was getting kind of nervous and scared because, like, I'm starting to get exhausted and I can't beat the swell. I can't get on top of my kayak. So I literally just, like, threw the kayak away and just started swimming toward the shore. And a surfer came up to me and um, was able to kind of help guide me. Like, I mean, I didn't ever need his help. I was able to get through eventually. But I got on the shore. My kayak ended up washing up onto the beach. And I just started throwing up, like, a gallon of seawater. I swallowed so much water. Like... It can happen so quick. If I didn't have my life jacket on, I would have drowned. It was like it, it happened so quick. 
Anyway, uh, in November 2022, Tira Wethy. Weathy spent an hour hanging around the beach at sunset, and the words can hardly describe what she saw. Weathy found an American crocodile getting lapped up by the waves on the beach in South Sebastian Inlet by McLarty Treasure Museum in Florida. Sebastian Inlet is just past uh, Melbourne Beach and is on the border of Brevard County and Indian River County, or the Space Coast and the Treasure Coast. At first, Weathy thought it was an alligator in the shallows needing help to get back into freshwater. Once she realized it was a crocodile, this one without a tracking device, she kept her distance and filmed it from her phone. It would probably never get to see this again in my life. I'm going to hang out until the sun is gone, she said in the video. It's gotten thousands of views on YouTube and TikTok. You can go down to the Everglades and see them. It's not like they're completely uncommon now. Like In certain areas, you can see them. You just... And if you, but if it was an alligator, would you have walked up to it? You didn't walk up to it because it was a crocodile. Like, I, I'm just, I'm picking at her a little bit. It's fine. I mean, uh, crocodile chills on a dock in the Atlantic just ahead of COVID-19. Uh, crocodile estimated between eight and ten feet long was spotted in a dock in the Atlantic on February 25th, 2020. A few days later, on March 3rd, 2020. Uh, there was another sighting of the reptile. Sarah Sutton, then 18, hopped on a kayak to get a closer look. Sounds like a good idea. He likes the basket at certain times of the day. Sutton, 2019 graduate of Melbourne Central Catholic, told Florida Today. Um, and another one on December 17, 2019. Uh, Croc caught co on, at the Cocoa Beach Pier. I mean, th there are a bunch of sightings of this happening because... I think their numbers are going up, which is a good thing. Like, we we want them to do well. And I pulled this up. Historically, you can kind of see Melbourne's a little bit farther north here. So, like, this is supposedly their old range. But, yeah, this is, I mean, this is a map of their historic range. They came all the way up to Pinellas. We've had a few in, on this coast as well. This is the area that I live in right here. And so, like, I mean, they, they come up here. But, you know, for the longest time recently, this has kind of been their range right here. Like, the very southernmost part. I mean, you can see there's, like, there's clusters of areas where you can see a lot of them. There definitely is. If you can get down there and see, I mean, they live out in the Keys, too. But, I mean, they're also, like, like, they... they they have a decent range besides Florida. It's not like they're completely decimated. Um, there was a while where they were, and now they've made their way back. So it's like, I mean, this is a this is a good thing. This is a good problem to have. People are freaking out because they're not used to an actual crocodile. People always think that alligators are crocodiles, and you know, there's plenty of people who do know the difference. But like, I mean, this is this is a good problem to have. Look how cute he is. They got, like, you know, the more sun. They just look a little bit more mean, and they are known to be more aggressive, so people freak out. But, like, here's where the my, my question starts to come into play. Okay. So conservation starts doing its job. Okay, we're always told that, like, I was just reading an article recently talking about how the world's population of animals has dropped 70%. And that also includes, like, that's biomass. That also includes, like, insects and stuff like that you don't really think about. But, like, they they are a huge amount of biomass in the world. Their populations are vastly down. The fisheries are vastly down. There are some animals that are doing exceedingly well. The, if it's an animal that is in an area that is well off and... I, regardless of what you want to say, the United States is pretty well off compared to the rest of the world, mostly. Whatever argument you want to make. The lower common denominator, like the, the, the poorest people in the United States are doing a lot better than a lot of the average people in most other countries. You can't argue with that. I mean, shoot. The people who have food stamps still have a roof over their head and a TV. Like, yes, there are homeless people. A lot of homeless people are homeless because of their own drug addictions and they don't want to get help. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. And a lot of them choose to be like that. Like, they're, 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 Anyway, the point is, is that if it's in an area 
where people overall are doing pretty good. The animals that are in that immediate area that are known are most likely going to do fine. There's a couple reasons for that, at least nowadays. Back in the day, no one cared about conservation. They just killed everything until they were wiped out. Back in the 80s and 90s, crocodiles, alligators, um, jewfish or goliath grouper, whatever you want to call them, they were just decimated. And now their numbers are on the rise where alligators are, there's millions of alligators. I mean, there's 1.5 million, I believe, in the state of Florida alone. Crocodiles are finally making a comeback. And they've made enough of a comeback where they're starting to move up north to more of their historic range and people are like freaking out about it because they're not used to that. They just forgot there was crocodiles. So like, that's my point is like, this is a good thing. Panthers are starting to make their way up north and their numbers are starting to rebound and people are like, oh my God, there's a panther in my backyard. What do I do? And like, we've built in, built up so much because we completely forgot that we needed to protect the land that they live on in order for them to survive. And now that people are getting them in their backyard in Tampa, you know, they're, we're in denial that they're moving up north, you know, um, and then like Jewfish, we, they just started, they opened up a harvest season for them because there's so many of them that they're destroying the reefs they live on because they eat all the fish and no one's allowed to take them. Like th th this is a good problem to have. The bison is making a comeback. Deer are making such a huge comeback. Uh, the turkey, every animal that can make us money basically from hunting or, you know, whatever the reason is, if it can make somebody money, it will be protected. Big game animals like giraffes and zebras and all that stuff, if you allow those hunting lions, they're never going to go extinct because those areas are going to be protected so that the people can go in and hunt them and give money to the local governments and you know the local people. That's how conservation works, sadly. You got to be able to take you know, make it a money thing so that people want, you know, leopard, ge not leopard geckos. I mean, they're never going anywhere. Ball pythons, crested geckos weren't even known to exist until 95. And now all of a sudden they're in every pet shop in the United States because like, you know, everyone wants them as pets and they're, they're, they're never going to go extinct now. Tigers, lions, they're, we have more tigers in Texas than there are in the entire wilds of where they're from. They're never going to go anywhere because it's a commodity. And it sucks that it's viewed that way, but that's the way it is. So this is a good thing. And I think more of this kind of stuff needs to happen. And um, we need to realize that once those populations start to rebound, what do we do with them? Well, uh, we got to keep the populations in check because we have a lot of people out there. And at a certain point, there's too many animals and you got to cull that population. You're not going to cull the human population. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Stay wild.